Hello coders and welcome to another How to Code Well tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at Array Reverse in PHP. This will reverse the array, obviously, but there's a couple of quirks to do with preserving keys in the array. We're going to be looking at that in today's tutorial. So without further ado, let's get into the code. Okay, let's start off in the PHP Storm IDE. Now we're using the How to Code Well Code School GitHub repository. I'll put links to that in the show notes below. The first thing I need to do, of course, is I need to open PHP using the PHP start tag. Let's do that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is create an array of fruits. So let's create a variable and we're going to call this fruits. We're going to equal this to an array and the array will have our collection of fruits. So in this case, we're going to have apples, we're going to have oranges, and we're going to have pears. Okay, so we have our three array elements in this variable of fruits. So this is the current order. Let's go and print that current order out and see what we get. So in order to print out an array, what we can use is the print R function. So let's go and type print underscore R. And let's just pass in fruits like so. Now the print R function will print this out to the screen. However, it's not formatted very well. To format it better, what we can do is use the pre tags in HTML. And we would do that by opening and closing the pre tags like so. Let's print these out. So print and then pre. And then after the print R type print and then close the pre tag. Okay, so that is our array and this is how we're printing that out. Now we need to display this to the screen and because it's PHP, we need to have a web server. Now, luckily PHP has an internal web server that you can use. I've got a, a video tutorial on how to create that using the PHP command line. I'll put links to that in the show notes as well but this is essentially what happens. So here we've got the array that we have created. We can see that we've got apples, oranges, and pears. And we can also see that we have the index here. So zero is apples, one is oranges, and two is pears. Okay, so let's go ahead and reverse this. And we're going to use the array underscore reverse function to do so. Let's head back over to the code. So what I'm going to do on line three here is I'm going to create another variable. We're going to call this fruits and then reverse. And we're going to assign that the value that comes back from the array underscore reverse function. So let's go ahead and call that function now. Let's type array underscore reverse. Okay, I'm just, I'm not going to put anything in the parentheses at this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to control click and see the actual documentation of array reverse. So we can see that there's two arguments that we need to supply to this function. This is the array that we wish to reverse. And this is the preserve keys value as well. Now, by default, this is set to null. I'll talk about what this means in just a second. Let's scroll up a little bit here. We can see that it returns an array with elements in the reverse order. And you can see a link to the php.net manual here. So if you want to see some more examples, then do check out that link. Okay, so the first parameter is an input array. So this is the array that we wish to input. And then the second parameter is a Boolean. By default, it's set to null. So if set to true, the keys are preserved. So again, I'm going to be describing what that means in just a second. Okay, so we need to supply two parameters to this array call. Let's go back to the code. And the first parameter is fruits. Okay, let's hit save. Now what I'm going to do is copy this line on line five and paste it on line six. And we're going to change fruits to be fruits reversed like so. Let's save that. And now let's go back to our browser. Refresh the page and you'll see that we have the original array here, but we've also got the new array. And notice that this array is now in reverse order. So pears that came out last is now coming on top here. So pears, oranges, and apples. However, what has not changed? 
The thing that hasn't changed is the keys. So with an array, we start with key zero, regardless of the value. So zero, one, and then two. This means that there's three elements in this array. However, we haven't preserved the keys when we reverse the array. So no longer does pairs have the key of two. This changes the key of pairs to zero by reversing the array. Because we only have three elements in this array, oranges, which is the second element, will always have the key of one. So that's fine. However, apples here used to have the array key of zero, but now it has the array key of two. Essentially, apples and pears have been swapped around. Now you have to be careful when you're writing PHP code because you could make the assumption that the keys will change and reverse much like the values have, but by default, that isn't the case. Now, this is what the preserved keys parameter is all about. Let's go back to the code and I'll demonstrate how. So what we're going to do is put in the second parameter and this is a Boolean. So this is either true or it's false. So we're going to supply true and this is going to preserve the keys. Can you see the IDE has put that out there? Preserve the keys. So let's hit save and then refresh that page and see the difference. Okay, so what we've done here is we've reversed the array, but we've also preserved the keys. So originally apples had the array key of zero. However, we've reversed the array. Therefore, apples is now underneath oranges such as this, but we've preserved the keys and therefore the key is zero. Likewise, with pairs, it had an original key of two. We've reversed the array. This means that pairs are now on top and the key here is two. So we've reversed the keys as well as the values. Again, be very cautious when you're dealing with array reverse, especially if you're looping over things and you're expecting keys to be the same or expecting them to be different and you haven't dealt with the preserved key parameter. If you found this tutorial helpful, then please let me know. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the How to Code Well channel because I've got lots of content like this. Also, if you've got any coding questions, then don't hesitate to ask. Please ask them in the Discord server. Go to howtocodewell.net forward slash Discord. Also, there's a bunch of links to other courses and other bits and pieces that I've done there too. Happy coding, everyone, and I will see you again very, very soon. Cheers. Bye.